As we all know, this morning we're gathered here primarily for the purpose of uh, the crew being briefed by the students on the two experiments slated to fly on STS-26. And here with us this morning is Lloyd Bruce, the student, uh, and he's from uh, McDonald or McDonald Douglas is sponsoring him, and he's from uh, St. Louis. <laughs> okay. Well, basically, the experiment is a very simple one. Um, what we're trying to observe is the effects of weightlessness on the uh, grain formation and uh, molecular uh, reorganization of the titanium filaments there. Um, the experiment itself is, uh, again, I say it's very simple. What the um, astronauts will be doing is they'll observe for any um, discrepancies such as a broken tube or um, loose wiring or anything like that. And you'll flip up the master switch control, activate it, and you'll see uh, the light goes on. This will uh, confirm the continuity of the circuit. And what you'll do is flick the master switch and you hit the master switch and complete the circuit. And if you observe the wire there, it'll deform. maintain this for approximately 20 seconds and that will raise the temperature of the of the wire up to 882 degrees centigrade okay so we just need to get it above 800 and right whatever that is mm -hmm. that's why the wires are the length they are they were calculated to carry the current and create <coughs> that, okay. that temperature okay and basically that's it so um, again I'd like to thank all the McDonnell Douglas and NASA personnel for all the support they've given me and uh, just to say to if this goes out to any students to try and get involved in it and it's not too hard to make them an experiment and it's real fun, fun and interesting and you meet a lot of people. <laughs> well, okay. Let me say something to you why you know this uh, this isn't going to be free for you either we you know in the astronaut office we enjoy doing this type, type of experiment because uh, not because a lot of the times it's a Nobel Prize winning mm -hmm. type of science, but, but mostly because it involves uh, young people like yourself getting involved at very early in the space program and getting a chance to, to work uh, in the system and, and getting us a chance to work with folks like you. And we're always impressed with the, with the caliber of students that we get to work with. But we also want you to understand that you have a responsibility now to go back just like you said I like the words that you used to, to uh, share your enthusiasm with the, the rest of your students and your faculty and people you work with to try and uh, interest more young bright students to get involved in the in this program because we need all the good folks we can get so we appreciate all the work you're doing too thank you uh, Charlie here will represent our student uh, who unfortunately cannot be here as John indicated the uh, the purpose is to try to grow crystals, in this case of lead iodide, a, along a membrane which will be mounted at the uh, edge where the uh, inner O-ring is on that middle bulkhead. The membrane is actually a copolymer of polyethylene and polypropylene. And it's simply there as a kind of a, an orienter on which crystals can grow. Otherwise, they would just grow throughout the solution and probably not get to any significant size. And we're hoping to orient the growth on that membrane. Specifically, it's an apparatus then with four chambers, membrane in the center, deionized water in these two inner chambers, two valves, and then the silver end will contain a lead acetate solution, primarily the source of lead ion, lead 2 plus ion. And the right hand compartment, as you see it, the blue handle end, if you like, will contain a potassium iodide solution, the source of the iodide ions. Just before the 51L flight, Rich was off on an internship in New York City uh, at the time they needed to be loaded. And uh, now, He's being in medical school, 
Uh, I've tried to supervise the construction of the apparatus, and uh, he tells me when I'm wrong and <laughs> things of that sort. <laughs> I guess that outlines it yes. briefly <laughs> for you. Uh, these crystals, any color? Are they clear? They are a fairly bright yellow color, yes. Really? They'll be easily distinguishable to in their formation. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Sure. I hope we get this done pretty quick. Right. It's going to be an alpha for you. Thank you. We'll get this done soon. We're actually making a new set of valve stems. So as soon as those are done, we'll have two. But both of those from last time. What has changed is they've got larger, purer silver bromide crystals in that gel, and that's how they increase their film sensitivity. How they grew them, I cannot, for one, find out. But that's, that's what happened. Now, we're playing that same game, not with visible film, but with X-ray or gamma ray film. Same principles. That is, those elements that are near the bottom of the chemist's periodic table, if that means anything to you. Uh, and so, that, so that's the first thing, pick an element near the bottom of the periodic table, both of which lead and mercury are. Uh, don't pick boron or carbon or something up near the top of the table. All right, that's a gross judgment. Now, once having done that, you can, you can pick those ones at the bottom, and some are a little bit more efficient at diffracting x-rays than others.